The last special quadrilateral that we're going to look at is the kite. And the kite has some interesting characteristics as well. They're kind of unique to them in and of themselves. Um, the one that we're going to prove here is shortly is that the diagonals are perpendicular. But the rest of these, two, three, four, and five, they're kind of unique to the uh, kite because it is only occurring with one of the diagonals where we've seen the patterns before with a parallelogram that is typically the same with both diagonals. So I'm going to go to interactive um, GeoGebra just for a second. What we're doing in this first one is we're proving that this angle epsilon here, or angle E, is 90 degrees. And I've drawn a picture of a kite here, and it doesn't really matter where I position uh, or the shape of this kite, position E. I can stretch it out or I can thin it down, but that angle at epsilon is always E, or always 90. Um, another thing that I want you to kind of take a look at is these vertex angles right here at A and at C. If you notice, no matter where I position this, those angles will always be equal to each other, although they change in measure they will always be equal. So this one diagonal, the long horizontal diagonal, will bisect the vertex angles um, at A and at C. And if you look at D and B, it's not too hard to determine that that's not the case, that those angles are not being bisected no matter where I put it. So what we want to do is we want to have some universal truth no matter where we position this. And in this case, no matter where I place E, these vertex angles are bisected. We also are seeing that these at D and B are not. We are also can see here that um, as the diagonals bisect each other at point E, these two shorter sides are going to be equal length. So this diagonal DB gets bisected by the other diagonal, but that is not the case with the other one. So here I am just trying to make it a case for there's some mixed characteristics in this kite. It's kind of this hybrid of it's got some of the characteristics of a parallelogram and some of them are not characteristics of a parallelogram. So the main ones I just pointed out, we were going to make sure that they have um, a right angle when they meet. We're also going to make sure that we can figure out that their angles are going to be bisected by one of the diagonals. We're also going to be able to point out that one of the diagonals gets bisected by the other one, but not the other other one, not the other way around at least. Um, we're also going to be able to determine if I draw just this one diagonal from A to C, it'll create two congruent type triangles, the big one on the top and the and the big one on the bottom. If we draw just this one, if you can picture drawing just from D to B, it would not create the triangles on the, the triangle on the left would not be the same as the triangle on the right. You kind of got to envision taking away that middle diagonal there first. And, and I'm not going to go through all that on this diagram to do it, but you can, can see that they wouldn't be congruent. You can tell the triangles on the right is not the same as the triangle on the left if you get rid of that horizontal line. So now let's go back into what we were going to do. I just wanted to illustrate a few things there. We're going to prove that the diagonals of this kite are perpendicular because that's what we believe is true we see in the GeoGebra diagram as well so here's our job we somehow have to show that there's a right angle somewhere occurring at point E so our job is to figure out how to make that happen and if we use a lesson from what we did with our parallelograms and in particular our rhombus we were able to prove there's a right angle there if we could first figure out why these angles that are at angle E and I'm going to select angle 1 and 2 here I'm going to choose those two angles because it appears that those two could be part of a triangle on the bottom and a triangle on the top that could be congruent. And if they were congruent, then these would have to be the same by CPCTC. And if they're the same by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, then those two angles would have the same measure, would have to angle or add up to a straight angle, so that's our linear pair postulate. Therefore, we were able to prove that it was a 90 degree angle through a substitution and then a division property of equality. So that's kind of our first step. Um, but in order to get these two triangles in blue congruent, we know right away, because it's a kite, it has two distinct adjacent sides that are congruent. These are two adjacent sides that are congruent, so we've got a side. There's no way of telling what the angle is here. We don't know anything in particular about a kite at the moment, about the angle that's occurring at E. We're trying to prove it's 90. We don't really know anything about this angle over here, although we suspect that it's going to be bisected. And the only th other thing that we have in common is that these two share a side. So we're kind of stuck at this position here where um, we got two sides, and we'd like to get this third side over here, but honestly we don't have anything other than what we suspect that they are. They're, we think that this uh, vertical diagonal is going to be bisected by the horizontal, but we haven't proven that yet either. So got to go about a creative way of figuring out how to come up with some more pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with some more pieces by getting a second set of triangles congruent first. So here's 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to outline what we're going to do, and then we're going to go to prove it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get these two triangles, the yellow and green one, congruent. Now this can happen pretty quickly. Let's talk about the facts that we know. It's a kite. So we have two distinct adjacent sides that are congruent. So I already know that those two sides are congruent by the definition of a kite. I also know that AC is equal to AC by the reflexive property. So therefore, I've got those two triangles congruent immediately by side, side, side. So starting off our proof, we know that ABCD is a kite. So we know it has kite features, which um, I've said a couple of times already, but it has two distinct adjacent sides that are congruent. So that is our given information. Because it was given as a kite, we knew then that AD would have to be equal to AB by definition of a kite. We also know that um, DC is congruent to uh, BC by definition of a kite. So that gives us a side and another side. And then we picked up the side AC. So AC is congruent to AC because of the reflexive property of equality, which then allows us to say that we know that the yellow and the green triangle, so if I name it ADC, it has to be congruent to the other triangle, which would be ABC. And that is by our side, side, side congruency theorem. Okay, so what value did that have? Remember, keep in mind what I'd really like to do and end up proving, let me highlight this, is that this triangle here, getting a lot of colors on it, is going to be the same as this triangle down, sorry, right in here. So the value of me getting the red and the green one, I'm sorry, let me back some of these colors off. The value of getting the yellow and the green one congruent is now I can use these angles because I can use this angle right here, angle A, I'm going to name it angle 1, and this angle here, angle 2, have to be congruent by CPCPC. So that's the next thing I'm going to follow up with is that angle 1 has to equal angle 2 because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles and they have to be congruent from our yellow and green triangle. Now we're going to specialize and so it doesn't get so busy with colors. Let's take a look at this top blue triangle along with this bottom red triangle. Now those two triangles will have the angles that we wanted at the beginning, angles 3 and 4, now I just renamed differently. We can prove that those two angles are congruent because we know that the red triangle in the bottom and the blue triangle in the top are congruent by, and this time we have a side, an angle, and a side, and a side, angle, side. So we've got those two triangles that we know are congruent. So triangle, and now I've got uh, DAE. DAE is congruent to triangle. And if I go DAE, I want to go BAE. And that time it was by, as I said, we had a side, angle, side. So side, angle, side, congruency theorem. The value of that is, now I know that angles 3 and 4 have to be congruent because 3 and 4 are matching parts in those two triangles. So angle 3 has to be congruent to angle 4 because there are corresponding parts of congruent triangles and they must be congruent. The fact that 3 and 4 are congruent is going to end up helping us prove that they have to be perpendicular because angle 3 plus angle 4 has to equal 180 because of our linear pair postulate. 3 and 4 add up to 180 because they form a straight line between our segment BD. But angle 4 is exactly the same as angle 3, so I'm going to make that replacement. I'm taking statement 8 and making a substitution from statement 9. So angle 3 plus, taking out our angle 4 here, replacing it with angle 3 gives us another angle 3 equals 180. And that is by our substitution property of equality. And then we're going to collect our like terms. We really have two of these angle 3s that equal 180. And that is by collecting like terms. And then finally what we want to do is get rid of that 2. So we can clearly show that angle 3 has to be 90 degrees. So angle 3 has to equal 90 degrees by our division property of equality. 
So now I've been able to establish that angle 3 is a 90 degree angle, so therefore our diagonals in step 13 means that if we go from A to C, which is one of our diagonals, it's got to be perpendicular to our other diagonal, which is BD, because we forced there, because at that intersection point E, we forced it to be a 90 degree angle, so by definition of perpendicular lines. And that's exactly what we're setting out to do, prove that the diagonals always have to be perpendicular. So there's our first proof of our, I guess, our characteristics of a kite. Um, I'm just going to keep going with this now because if we look at the second one, it says, uh, let's look at the third characteristic. Only one pair of opposite angles are congruent. The only pair of opposite angles that are congruent in this whole figure are these two angles here and here. They're going to be um, congruent. And only one diagonal. Four is the biggest one I wanted to come back to, and then I'm going to leave it at that. Only one diagonal bisect the vertex angles, and that fits in really nicely with this last proof that we just did. If we draw this diagonal at AC, we can see that angle one and angle two are equal, and they got bisected by the diagonal. And if we came over here, we could get these triangles on the right, the small ones here, and the small one here can grow up very easily because we already have a side, we have a reflexive side, we have a right angle. So by hypotenuse leg, the small triangle on the bottom right here and the top right of over here are congruent. And that would mean the corresponding parts are congruent, which means angle C has to be the same um, on each side of that diagonal. And that forces the vertex angle to be congruent. So there's a lot of things that we can whittle away with here once we have our triangles congruent. But the big one is I want to be able to prove that the diagonals are congruent. And that's kind of where we're going to leave it live for at this point.